Well, we're going to go ahead and get started. My name is Paul King. I'm from Lighthouse Christian Center in Port Angeles, Washington, and uh, we'll be uh, talking about today um, effective communication, uh, but I've entitled this Crank Up the Communication. Crank Up the Communication. Uh, before we jump into this, I want to read some scripture, and then I'm going to ask some questions, and then we'll dialogue some more later on here in just a few minutes. Um, for those of you that uh, just came in, if you do not have a handout, please don't worry. You can find me on Facebook, Paul King, and uh, friend me or whatever, and I will send you the information digitally. So you can have that and you'll be able to have that available to you. Maybe you want your teams to have more than just the one copy for the six of you. So, um, <laughs> but we can, I can definitely send that out to you. Um, I hold nothing back. So John chapter 15, verse 15 says, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I've called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. So let me ask you a question. You see the question there. It says, how do you think it felt to be called Jesus's friend? Answers. Great. This, this, this would be before. So... Great. How else would you feel? Tight. Anybody else? You're being called Jesus' friend. Honored. Privileged. Great words. Special. So how, how are you a friend to the children in your children's ministry? Let's answer that. How are you a friend to those that come every week to your children's ministry. Yeah. Being friendly. Available. That's good. Remembering names. How many of you have a hard time remembering somebody's name? <laughs> Maybe we'll do another workshop on that another time. There's a lot of hands. How, how do you effectively remember people's names? And There's a lot of different ways you can do it, a lot of different ways. It's saying them then over and over again, putting a name to you know, some sort of fate recognition with a, their first letter of their whatever. Maybe you find out what kind of sport they like or whatever it may be, but putting something that ties them to it. Uh, remembering their names. Anybody else? Listening to the stories. You're jumping ahead. <laughs> you read. <laughs> no. Yes. I ask, how was your week? So you get on their level. That's good. That's good. A fist bump. Yeah. Getting on their level. That's good. So with technology changing at a rapid pace, as leaders, we also need to crank up our communication effectiveness. We have to. If we were still doing what we did in 1980, we were way outdated. If we're still pulling up the flannel graphs, not that they're bad, which we'll be playing tomorrow morning, a great game. So if you pull out the flannel graph and you put it up there, nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. But how is it going to effectively communicate to those that, you're, that are sitting there, that have technology in their hand. They've got most of them that are in sixth grade, if you go all the way through sixth grade, probably already have a device of some sort. So you're competing against this, okay? That's, that's reality. So how do you effectively communicate? Well, here's some things that we can do. Our effectiveness is uh, characterized by shared meaning, understanding, interactions, and results that are substantially positive. We communicate with words, but we also use many other tools as well. Here's the first thing that we do. Effective communication is physically inviting and warm. It's inviting and it's warm. When we communicate, how, how cool would it be to be able to come up and you're sharing your message and you're sharing the topic that you're talking about and this is what you're doing. 
Your eyes are down. You're constantly looking at the floor. You never make visible eye contact with anybody. This is, this is pretty cool, isn't it? No. They want to be engaged, and they want to connect with you. How do you do that? You've got to make eye contact with them. You have to, to get on their level, because then what that, what that does is you begin to speak into them, and you begin to speak life to them, and you begin to really engage with them. So make sure that, uh, that you position yourself at the child's level. I love that. I always, I'm, I'm now the lead pastor, but 10 months ago, I was still in the children's pastor role, and I, I would get down on their level. I would get down, and you know, if it was somebody with, okay, maybe a sixth grader, I wouldn't get on their level, but if it was a, a, like a kindergartner, preschooler, whatever, you get on their level, and all of a sudden, something just changes in them, and they're like all lit up, and they're running towards you, arms wide open. That's huge. How many of you like to smile? Probably not too many of us. <laughs> Hopefully you like to smile because, if, and especially in children's ministry, you have to smile. You have to. Uh, it's just, an, it, if you're not smiling a lot, then they kind of look at you and go, are you mad at me? Are, are you upset? What's going on? Why, why, why is there this wall between you and me? Especially when you start getting up into like third preteen, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, somewhere in there. They're going to be looking at you. They're walking through some difficult things. And they need to see that face, that friendly face that's always ready with a smile on. It doesn't mean you have to plaster it on there all the time because they know that you're human, hopefully. But they're looking at you and they're saying, hey, can you, I see Dry faces all day long when I'm at school. Or, you know what, maybe it's a dry face when they get home. And what they need is just somebody to smile and say, how's your day? How are things going? And as you're saying it, you're saying it with a smile on your face. It, it just speaks volumes to them. Make sure your gestures are deliberate and full of life and warmth. I want to do an illustration this, uh, this afternoon, just really quickly. I need two people, two volunteers, just, just pop up here, whoever you are, two of you, somebody, there's one. I see one moving in this direction, somebody else. doesn't matter. Chris, come on up here. All right. So we're going to do a, an illustration here. I'm going to have one of you sit in the chair. One of you sit in the chair. Perfect, perfect. Chris, now this is what I want you to do. I want you to stand in front of him, and I want you to look at him, and I want you... He's following directions. He said, stand in front of him. Right. But look at him. And now I want you to tell him the story of David and Goliath. Go for it. Go. Uh, there once he was a shepherd and he had flockers, but there was also this big old boar that was sitting next to him. And there was a big old giant. And in some of the people who had to go fight this big old giant. Now, keep going. Sure. This is, <laughs> man, this is, are you intrigued already? Wow. Let's go. No, 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 give him a hand. Give him a hand. Give him a hand. Let's reverse roles here. Reverse roles here. Now, now I want you to give the same story to Chris. Okay. Ready to go. Chris, did you know that there was this guy? And then there was this giant, this huge creature of a man. He's closer than mine. You see how tall I am compared to you right now? Yeah. So, Goliath was really, really bad, and he said God was dumb. Yes, and all the people that believed in him were dumb. Do you really not? Yes. So, you're not dumb. You're really smart. So was David. And Curtin. <laughs> Give him a hand. Go ahead. Have I'm going to actually put that back over here. I'm going to trip over this cord. Yeah, perfect. So I want to ask the question here just really quickly. How did it feel to be a short person? How did it feel to be the short person sitting in the chair? How did uncomfortable. uncomfortable. How did you feel in that position? A little bit uncomfortable. Okay, so how did you feel to talk down to the individual? 
It seemed easier. Why did it seem easier? Okay. It was uncomfortable for me, so I, that's why I made the sacrifice. Okay. Because I wanted to get the better. Okay. So we see that this, this is, think about the child that you're talking to. Think about the child that you're talking to. And, and, and this, is a great, this is a great example. You can even do this with your own teams. Explain this story. I want you to tell the story of Joseph and his brothers. Or, you know, I, I mean, there's so much that you can do to help with the effective communication side. This is just one thing. Be physical, physically, not physical. Don't be physical with your kids. It, man, we're being recorded. Don't be physical with your kids. But be physically inviting and warm to your kids. Even if it does mean, man, because as you notice, I'm trying, I, I, I even feel like, man, I got to back up a little bit here because I, I feel like I'm, I'm p- talking down to you guys. But when I step back, I feel like I'm looking at you guys in the eyes now. Does that, does that make sense? So I'm actually even doing something for me so I can feel like I'm at your level, even though I'm not at your level. Does that make sense? And so even if I got up here like this and I may be talking back here, but how does it make this person feel? Whoa, you're towering over me. You know, just think about those kinds of things. Here's the second thing. Effective communication is about sharing. Don't share with students what you want to say because we call that preaching. Okay, there's a time and a place for it. But this is about sharing your feelings and responding to the feelings of children. Share the microphone also. Share the microphone also. Let the children talk. Because when you do, you're showing that you care about their feelings. So, if, if I was in this situation right here and we were telling the story of David and Goliath, ask the child, how did you feel when Goliath stood over the top of you? And the kids are going to laugh because the kid's name isn't Goliath. And they're going to ha- have a fun time. The kid that's sitting there is not David, unless you use a person by the name of David. But, you know, but how did it make you feel? Getting back into that again and asking them and letting them talk about it. Um, when the children hurt, share their feelings and rejoice with the children who are happy and excited. Here's the third thing. Effective communication is measured are you aware of how children perceive you? Are you aware of how children perceive you? When they go home and they talk to their parents, do you know how they see you as a communicator? No. They, we don't. Even as a, even as a volunteer, it doesn't, it doesn't even matter where, I mean, if you are in a teaching position and you're helping in small groups, how do those children perceive you? How do they look at you? Are you fun? Do you, do you, get, do you get on their level? Do you do a self-check occasionally and see how you're coming across to the children? Do a self-check. How is your body language? Are, as we've talked about just earlier, are children pulling back? Are they like, whoa, this guy's intense. Okay, there may be a time and place for intensity. But are you still, are you coming across that warm and loving and compassionate and caring for them? And Hey, you know, when we're talking about whatever theme you're on or whatever series you're going through, peer pressure, you know, with your preteens, maybe it's, maybe it's the topic of sex and all those different things and just, you know, how do you, how, how do you come across? You might need to, you might be too harsh and if they're straining to hear or understand then you might need to be a little bit more clear. For some you may have some students that are just, they have the, that, they're just wired, like, going crazy. They, they, they've already, like, they came to church, and their breakfast was a candy bar. And they're, like, spinning like a top, out of control, crazy, you know. 
how, how do you how do you deal with that in the in the time when you've got to get down on their level and and start speaking to them and you know check the check the balance of communication allow the kids to give you honest feedback I, you know how many of you allow your students to come up to you and say hey you know I don't I, I don't really understand this or I, I I'm having a hard time with this whatever this is okay I, I, I when it comes to the communication side of things how many of you actually let your students come up to you and be vulnerable and and, and maybe it is taking those sixth graders and saying hey this Sunday taking them aside this Sunday I want you to cr critique me evaluate me how is my communication am I speaking to the sixth grader or am I speaking to the first grader Depending on how you're set up, the way we're set up, we go first through sixth grade, and we have a preschool. Because I know, man, if I, if I, have, if I had preschoolers, it's too far over their head. It's too far over their head. Because I speak at the highest level that is in the room. That's where I teach. Because if I'm not hitting the fifth and sixth grader, then I've lost them. I've lost them. If I'm always speaking down at the first grader, you're going to lose your fifth and sixth grade, your third, fourth, fifth, sixth graders. You're going to lose your preteens real quick. So, but allow them to give you that feedback. Uh, do you let them tur uh, have a turn to talk and ask questions? Uh, your communication's a, a lot like looking in the mirror. Make sure that you check it often. Check it often. Here's the fourth thing. Effective communication involves laughter and delight. How many of you like to have fun? Come on, we're, we, I think we all do. Engage in a play with the kids. You know, when you first get there, maybe you got your game center set up, you got your table and all of that. Do, do you get involved with the kids right then and there? That's going to be the start of the effective communication. Because now you've, you've pulled them in. They know you. you get, does that mean you have to do it with every single child that comes in that week? No. But maybe one week, if you're at the coloring table or you're at the game table or you're over here at, the, at whatever stations you have that you have set up, maybe you're just periodically each week you're going around and you're making different connections with different kids all the time. Engage and play with them. Even when you're in a small group, this is like all the way through. This isn't just for your main session that you have, that, uh, your large group session that you have on a, on a Sunday or this goes even into Rangers, this goes into girls' ministries, this goes into your small groups on Sunday mornings. Whatever that looks like, engage with them, play with them. Uh, they will draw, uh, be drawn to those who make them feel great. Laugh with the kids. Obviously be appropriate. Laugh at the appropriate things. Get involved in activities and participate enthusiastically with the kids. Participate with a sense of delight and enjoyment. Have fun with them. Have fun. And, and again, here's the, here's the thing. Smile. Smile. You know, you, one of the things that, that, that I did this year that it was brand new. I didn't, haven't done it for, uh, didn't do it for any other years. But I saw the smiles on the people's faces when I did it as I, as I got up in our fall fest and we're giving prizes away. And I go, uh, really quick, before we hand out all these prizes to these wonderful people, it's selfie time. You know, and all the faces were like, people were getting ready. I mean, kids were getting on dad's and mom's shoulders and everything began to happen. And it was like that caught them right where they were at. And I took this selfie shot, and the first thing I did, as soon as I was done, after all of giving those prizes away, we blasted it out on our Facebook page. And it was like the whole place just roared, and they lit up. Doing things like that, having fun with the kids, it's just the little things. It doesn't have to always be that. Maybe it's, uh, we, we used to do a, a little dance-off type of thing, you know, the chicken dance, and we'd get some kids up there. I mean, just some crazy, whacked-out fun stuff. But it engaged them. They had fun with it. It was on their level. So just a few things. Again, smile, smile. We, all, we have all heard it said that children rarely remember what you say. They rarely remember what you do but they will never forget the way you make them feel. 
they will never forget the way you made them feel. I want you to think about, about uh, that one person. Maybe it's a teacher. Maybe it was a counselor. Whoever it was, they got on your level and they heard you out. I remember in junior high, oh, man, junior, those three years were the worst. Those are rough years, man. I can't remember the counselor's name. I just remember him as Mr. M. But I was going through a rough time, and, and I sat in his office, and he just looked at me and said, what's going on? What are you dealing with? And he's sitting in his chair, and he's looking across his desk, as the perfect counselor would. And he just looks at me and says, Paul, what's happening? Why, why, what's, what are you struggling with? What's going on? And I just remember just that little bit, like 20 minutes with him and just hearing what he had to say. Hey, if you need to talk, I'm here. Just that little bit changed the way that I felt. In that day, the weeks to come, don't even know if the guy still works at the junior high. But he left an impact on my life because he took time out of his day, in the middle of his day, where he could have been do, working on some paperwork and whatever else, but he stopped and said, Paul, what's going on? What's happening? You have kids in your ministry that need you just to take that little break of time. What's going on? That's effective communication. Here's some other things to think about. Some other things to, to think about. About when it comes to Effective communication. They're the tips on effective communication to parents. How many of you guys write a newsletter out to your parents? Maybe it's through um, constant contact or maybe it's an actual hard copy, but you get a newsletter letter in your parents' hands. Do you do that? Some of you? Maybe? Okay. Um, if it's through constant contact or something like that, make sure you're not spamming them. Yeah, that, that kind of gets tiring after a while. <laughs> Social media, how many of you guys have a, a Facebook page for your children's ministry? Yeah? Great way to communicate with parents. On the fly, fast. Um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Over-communicate your events. I'm going to share just a few things here. If you, I, I, A couple years ago, I did an event, uh, an event class called Event Planning Like a Pro. If you want that. I can send that information to you. But here's some things. Over-communicate your events. Over-communicate your events through flyers, posters, mailers, emails, video announcements, word of mouth. Get your teams involved in it. Um, uh, again, social media, put it out there. Uh, even if, do what you can. Even if you have to budget it in to your, into your event that you're doing, like your fall festival or your trunk or treat, whatever it may be that you do, uh, because it's fresh on our minds, we just came out of that. So how many of you know that you could probably get flyers into your schools? We, we inundate the school, literally, from, from kindergarten all the way through high school because we, we have something for our teens. And it's a dual card, and we send it to the school. We get permission. We put the, the little blurb that's like a paragraph long that they want to say that it's not a part of, you know, it's not affiliated with the school, but it's a, uh, but we inundate them. We just give it to them. And every student that is in the five schools, elementaries, the junior high and the high school, we get them that information. And then we give, we do the, uh, the posters, we do the, um, the flyers, we do the, uh, actually, th just this last time, this is the second year that we've done it, we've actually gone to a radio station and actually had it advertised on the radio station. Um, maybe you have connections with somebody that they would be willing to do it. How We were blessed this year. 40 air times at the major time uh, during peak hours, like for families. And when we got the bill, there was an actual zero on it. 40 spots. So I'm just... It's just those connections. It's, it, and it's not just knowing somebody to know somebody, but really 
making those connections. And it starts with the students. It starts with the kids because, as, as we'll see here, if the children are happy and excited, then parents will be happy and excited. That's huge. So uh, here's, here's some questions I want you to think about. Rate yourself on, a f- on the four ways of cranking up your communication. Where do you need to improve? Where do you need to improve? Is it the, the warm and inviting part when you're speaking? Is it the sharing aspect? Is it the effective communication? Is it the measured piece that you're looking at? Is it the laughter and delight with the kids? Rate yourself. Which one do you need to work on? The second one is, is your classroom a, uh, or service a place of discovery where conversation is given? And, and it's a give and take opportunity. You're sharing and allowing, you're, you're, you're sharing, but then you're letting them give feedback as well. How do you feel when people preach at you? How, how, how do you like it when they listen to you? Think about the kids too. That's just something to think about. And it, when is it hard to smile with children? When's it hard? And how can you overcome that? Smile, 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 smile. Smile, smile. Turn the frown upside down. Smile. Any questions, comments, anything? We're just going to take some time now. We have about 10, 15 minutes to ask any questions. And this is open, so open dialogue. Because I'll be honest, I don't have all the answers. <laughs> but maybe somebody in here has a way of... So let's... let's any questions? one of the things that I just speaking from where I where I've been the ones that I have had the connection with at first it's a fearful thing they're scared they're like why are you coming up to me why are you why do you want to know what's happening in my life especially the older ones that's that some of that's going through their mind is, is this person going to yell at me? Does this person really care about me? I, I don't know you're, where you're at, but, um, and I'm sure we can, we can just say all across the board that we have um, those that are less fortunate that coming to our church, right? Okay? They're looking for a safe place. They're looking for somebody with an open arm. And so when I, when, I w- when I would be training with my children's leaders, I'd say, you have to be prepared for the hug. You have to be prepared for the hug. But I ask that you would just make sure that it's appropriate. Make sure it's appropriate. So I myself, they, w- they would always ask me, so how would you do something like that? I just prepared myself. I was always ready for the side hug. Didn't matter what it was, I was always ready. Even when I was down on my knee with the kids, I was still ready for a side hug. But as soon as they noticed I was on my knees, that wall, boom, it dropped. And they were like, oh, arms open wide? Come on. Who's going to resist that? You know? (laughs) But they are going to have that fear. They are going to have those thoughts that are going through their head. Any other questions? Maybe even some comments. Right. Yep. 
one of the things that just came to my mind and it, as we were just just standing here and sharing think about your think about your sports coach if you've done sports or anything like that what do they always say take a knee take a knee and sometimes your coach will will stand but a lot of them will get down on their knee too and they'll get down and okay all right guys come on you're a coach you're the coach and no matter how big or small your team is, you're the coach of that team. Yeah. Do you have another thought you want to throw out there? Because we need to end this because we have been crushing it for an hour. Anything you think of? I I would say that you maybe not every team meeting, but maybe it's coming at it from t maybe it's a four week process where you're saying, hey, let's just take this one and let's look at it. You know and just walk through some process and maybe it's once a quarter, maybe it's once a month, you know, you say, Hey, we're going to take this. And for four months, we're going to look for the first month. We're going to really hone in on our physical, um, you know, that physical inviting warm feel to this team. How do we do that? And we're going to practice it. So when you get out on the stage, it's a natural piece. It becomes natural. You're more, you're inviting, you're getting, you're, you're leaning in more, you're getting on eye to eye, you're, you know, doing those kinds of things. Is it uncomfortable at first? Oh yeah, because it's not natural for us to have these, um, you know, using your hands the right way how do you use your hands because sometimes people just overly use their body language and sometimes it's like maybe just be chill calm down it's just you know hey it doesn't have to be such a stressful thing you know but walking them through it walking them through it and i would say yeah maybe maybe it's a once a month like i said you know whatever that looks like um I think modeling is a huge thing. Modeling is huge. Looking at it from looking at it from all perspectives. So put yourself in the volunteer shoes who's either one, this is their first time. Okay? So look at it from a couple different ways. You're looking at it from a rookie, somebody who's been doing it for a while, and somebody who's a veteran. Okay? Look at it from all three perspectives and say, how would a rookie do it? A rookie would just be like, right in your face, okay? But somebody who's been doing it for a little bit, maybe they're, they're, they're at a moderate level, maybe they're going to come in, they're not going to be as, like, forceful, but now they're going to probably bend in a little bit more and try to engage with those, not just in the first row, but those that are in the second and third row. And then somebody who's been doing it for a while is probably going to step back a little bit more even though he has no more room to go, but he's trying to get back so he can see eye level with everybody. You see what I'm saying? So it's probably doing some of those things with, and, and just practicing it. Anybody else? Yeah. I would do uh, from topic two, leadership and discipline. Mm. Hmm. Communicating that. I think the communication side uh, on, a, on a disciplinary action piece is really getting on their level. You have to. You have to get on their level. When it comes to, now I'll be honest, this is a training piece that needs to happen with your teams. That's a training piece. And that, was a, that could be a whole nother workshop discipline. That's a whole nother thing. How do you, classroom discipline. But how do you do it? Um, to where it is a win-win for everybody. Um, it's, it's training them to get on their level. And, and not doing it with everybody around. If, so, like, if you're in the middle of a teaching time and you're on the stage, I had to train my team. I should not have to stand up here and call out somebody's name. I need you to help me in this process. Okay, if you have the if you have parents or teams that are down there training them, this is how you do it. Maybe the first thing is just coming up and sitting down right beside them. 
you're a presence now. Hopefully that changes them. And over the net, and then and then maybe you'll be able to get up and move away because they finally stopped. But if they act up again, you come and sit down. Johnny, you need to stop. Those kinds of things. But uh, if it's something above and beyond just a little a little correction, do it afterwards. You know, Johnny, you really you really are having a rough day today. Is there something that's happening and something happened before you got to church? What what's going on? Talk to me. Again, getting back on their eye level and just talking through that. So well, that's our session today. Uh, if you have any other any other questions, please don't hesitate to email me, talk to me. I'll be here all weekend. And uh, um, if you didn't get a handout, I want to make sure that you do get one. So I can email that to you or you can find me on Facebook and I'll be able to send that to you. So thanks, guys. Thank you.